feels really strange to be on a stage with people. Um, people in front of me, half of whom probably have COVID. <laughs> but at least I'm six feet away, 1.5 meters. It's good. <laughs> um, Steve mentioned earlier, we have got a really important session later today um, where we do have the buffet. We do have some of the sponsors for that. We do have the drinks. If anybody has a problem waiting for the drinks, there's a selection of hand sanitizers out in the auditorium. Feel free to sip ahead. Um, so thank you. That's it. That's all I've got. No. It's kind of strange being here because we haven't got together as an alliance for two years. And we've seen the effects. We went from Geneva that was actually focused for a lot of the time on connected vehicles with CVII, with VSS, with all of these different technologies to Kavisa during a period of churn for the entire planet. And the only reason we're here today is not because of me, Steve, the board, it's because of all of you as the members. And that really builds to the fact that we are a really healthy member-driven alliance. Again, thank you very much to the sponsors, those member companies that are helping Geneva go from strength to strength. Now, some of you I recognize from two plus years ago, we used to have 20 odd sponsors. We will get there. The second all members meeting this year, don't know where it is yet, but we know that it's gonna go from strength to strength as and when we can more easily travel. But thank you again to Genesis, Renesas, and Tuxera. So I'm gonna to talk to you about why Kavisa matters, why this week matters, why you, as individual contributors re representing your organization matters. And then just give a few thoughts that I've had the luxury of talking to many members about as we were going through that Geneva to Kavisa transition before we wrap up. So why does Kavisa matter? Why did Geneva matter? Why did we even change the name and the scope? Well, the challenge that we had with Geneva in many ways started by Graham, who's back in the front row, we were almost too successful. In those early years, when we were looking at this IVI problem, this IVI pain point of how can we have a standard system, Geneva became very, very associated with Linux-based IVI. Even though we moved and expanded into an OS agnostic IVI solutions, really focusing on Android as much as supporting the Linux legacy, even though we made the transition into connectivity, as we put on here, IVI is in the name, we could not get past the fact that many organizations were hooked on the IVI legacy of Geneva. And it wasn't representative of your contributions. So after many meetings virtually, much discussion among the board, many of the members, we first decided to rebrand to better represent where we wanted to go and what we were actually doing. And we became, very rapidly, the Connected Vehicle Systems Alliance. And what's the result been? Since last October, when we announced that, we now have two new OEMs, Ford, who I now represent, and Renault. And straight after this, you will see three OEMs, BMW, Renault, and Ford, discussing our challenges. And this is on top of the existing healthy OEM community. And then aside from that, we have another 12 members. And I can't lie, in terms of membership, it's been challenging two years with the challenges that all of these different industries have had and are going through with COVID. But we're really bursting out of it, in large part thanks to better representation from what the name Kavisa means to the industry. And let's think about the vision that was put together with the membership, our vision. Kavisa is an open, collaborative, and impactful technology alliance, accelerating the full potential of connected vehicles. And the membership, working together, were a force multiplier, creating more diverse, sustainable, and integrated mobility ecosystem. We're the enablers, the technologies that we create, the business relationships that we help to form 
are there to accelerate the products of all the tier ones, all the OSVs and ISVs, all the OEMs. And we're here as individuals in the room because we hope that these connected vehicles in the future will make a difference to us, to our families, to our friends, so that we can get to the goal of this connected, semi-autonomous, autonomous future slightly faster because we can talk and collaborate. And building on that, we're really a repository of the member ideas. There's no such thing as a bad idea. I would sometimes question that, having joined Ford, but that's okay. <laughs> but we're there to incubate and gather all of these different concepts so that we can create the best platforms, the best technologies, the best accelerators, the best relationships to further all of the members' organizations and others' ability to get to that vision. And we do that through facilitation. Thanks to Gunnar and Philippe in the past, and now Paul with Steve and others, we're here as an alliance to facilitate the member discussions. Not mandate, not control, not direct, facilitate, enable members to get their views, their needs fully understood so that we can create groups and ultimately deliver on those. But as Steve started by saying, Caviza is not an island. Geneva was not an island. We've always had amazing relationships with the likes of Autozar and W3C and Connected Car Consortium and all of these others. And actually, since we've become Kavisa, we're seeing that really grow. It's not a case that any one of those alliances touching the various pieces of technology that you would have in a future connected autonomous car can deliver the entire stack. But Kavisa is there to form a very critical piece, that critical piece that we're already demonstrating in some of the technologies. And let's think about those deliverables that help us do that. The huge one, vehicle signal specification. We can discuss the name, but VSS is already being broadly adopted by OEMs, by cloud vendors, AWS, you can go and see it. They put it in press releases today by fleet managers, by tier one, tier two suppliers, and by silicon vendors. And why is that? through its constructs, through its technologies, through the tree, it solves this critical issue of how things can communicate within an OEM, across OEMs, who knows in the future, but it's a critical piece that we need to accelerate the solutions as an industry. So I've been doing this at Geneva for a while, and I always used to stand on stage and to much annoyance from a couple of operating system vendors, used to say nobody ever bought a car for an operating system. I'd argue it's still true. But I'd also argue that nobody is ever going to buy a car because it has VSS or a competing technology in. People buy cars because of the features and functions, and they care about cars if they meet their expectations. So everything we do here should be easy to use and accelerate these amazing products that all of the OEMs, tier ones and others want to put out. That's why we're here. So why does this week matter? Well, again, I'm amazed. I'm so glad that we've got such great in-person attendance. I know that we will grow with time. And it's been a, it's been a hard journey, not gonna lie. The number of times Steve and myself have communicated in the last quarter about look uh, where we are now in Leipzig and all of the different things are happening and whether people can travel and whether the, the Ukraine situation will affect anything. But we have to start now because we're going to seize control of our future, our membership's future, our alliance's future by collaboration. So what I would say is learn, participate, ask questions. And in many ways, the most important bit is not the discussions you have this week with the people sat around you, but how you are able to take those ideas, those questions, what you have learned back into your organizations or back into your partner organizations and how you could bring those partner organizations to the next AMM or to the next meeting of some of these different pieces of Kavisa technology 
And I almost said Geneva Technology then, almost. So why does your organization matter? Well, ultimately, Kavisa is a container. It's an alliance. It's a collaborative alliance. We don't have products. We're not going to become a car company. We're not going to become an OEM or a tier one or any of these people. The only way that we can make a difference is through your organizations. Some of those organizations that we get ideas from might not be even members yet. But if we're serious about solving some of these challenges, it really is going to come down to how Kavisa, how Kavisa members can support other members, can support non-members so that we can make the most of where we need to get to. So let's give a few thoughts and hopefully a few pictures. Many people would argue that our future challenge is a connected ADAS vehicle. A vehicle with autonomous, semi-autonomous functionality within it that potentially has to communicate with other vehicles that have autonomous or semi-autonomous functions within it. And we've got some major challenges just on that communication piece. But apart from that, these car companies that really 20 years ago were just thinking about high-level software in their vehicles have gone through IVI, have gone through connectivity, now into robotic driving capabilities with high safety levels. And the challenge with a ACLD system or any safety critical system, if it's connected and you discover a security vulnerability, how do you patch it? You sat there and it's like, oh, well, it was safe when it left the plant, but I know it's now vulnerable. It's no longer safe. We've got some major challenges as an industry. And if we can start the communication, about some of VSS, CVII, all of these different technologies, then maybe, just maybe, it's a means of spreading that discussion into some of these other challenges that we have as OEMs and tier ones. I talk to a lot of my peers and other OEMs. We're very much in the legacy OEMs perceived as being disrupted by the likes of Tesla. And when we think about being disrupted by the likes of Tesla coming off the back of their earnings call, it's like, why is that? And the first discussion point is, oh, it's because they have better product. But it's not. We're being disrupted because Tesla are able, for one reason or another, to put out frequent updates, far higher cadence than most other car companies. For some reason, they're able to get the knowledge of those updates out to a wide user base, considering they barely do any marketing in the classical automotive sense. And they have low latency. So idea to deployment is much shorter than some, not all, of the classic OEMs. So if we're not going to be disrupted, it's not about coming up with a fantastic technology that we can deploy in 10 years. It's being able to say, we need this experience, this use case, this capability in the vehicles. How can I use this super fast capabilities of Kavisa technology or other technology to get it to market fast? In Kavisa and Geneva in the past, we used to say, oh, the OEMs at the top of the tree. Yeah, I think an OEM without customers isn't going to last too long. It's the customers that are putting the money into the ecosystem. Even just flows down to Kavisa and the technologies that we need for our experiences as customers. And if we doubt high frequency, low latency, I found some stats. This is in 2016. And you'll notice that there's quite a few old companies that may not exist now <laughs> related to map updates. So car to go, Daimler owned, drive now, BMW owned. And historically, it's the people that can do the most frequent updates, same is true on the app store today, get the most prestige, the highest ratings by the different customers. It's that time to success for the customers. And in many ways, we've got this challenge where we've got lots of fragmented solutions. My car company has three and a half different electrical architectures. I've been here six months, so I feel like I can say that without you judging me. And Kavisa has this ideal architecture 
VSS. This is how we could do it. And there's a gap. And it's really hard to evolve from where you are today with multiple competing systems created by multiple tier ones to an ideal solution. Never mind when that ideal solution to be successful in these connected autonomous vehicles needs to spread amongst multiple OEMs. So what we're really talking about in many ways is how Kavisa can not only provide the technology, but provide information through its buyers and sellers network on this is where it's heading, this is why it's going to be important. How can we lower the bar to entry of some of this technology? Just like Geneva did with Geneva Demo Platform under Gunner's lead. I don't know how many years ago it was now. So we've done this before and it's time to do it again. And it's really important that we succeed. We created this, for good or bad, Gunnar, how long did this take you? Uh, no, no comments. <laughs> <laughs> We've done this before when it comes to these technology stacks and making pieces accessible. And I would argue that we did it well at Geneva, but we would have done it better if we could have done it faster and if we could have collaborated with some of the people that may have been creating Android in parallel. Now is the opportunity with the relaunch, with Kavisa, to learn from what we've done in the past, keep our eye on the ball when it comes to exactly what customers may want, and continue as the strongest member-driven alliance that we have within automotive, focused on the technology, the members, the business, and the customers. So we're building on, we're not throwing away anything that we've done in Geneva before. And this is why Kavisa is so important. It's a fresh start, it's a fresh alliance with many new members, building on years of experience with a defined, very clear mandate on what we need to achieve and why, and a diverse set of members that have different needs that together we will deliver on. We'll fill the gap between now and the perfect. We don't know what it is yet, and that's kind of the excitement of what's to come. So with that, thank one more time to the sponsors, Genesis, Renesas, and Tuxera, and hand back to Steve. Thank you.